now that I'm done going through the model dropping the subdivisions and smoothing it out it's ready the next step of the process is to export this out bring it this read topologized high res model into Agisoft with the good UVs and transfer the texture map onto it so that's what we're gonna do in this step so I'm going to make sure I have this selected in the subtool the repo uh, re topologized model I'm gonna export and over here I'm gonna call it retopo ZBrush high res there we go and I'll save that out as an OBJ and then I'm gonna bring this into Agisoft to do the texture transfer this can take a little bit of time for it to transfer so again just like anything you're doing right now just be patient with ZBrush I reopened the Agisoft now and let's turn off the cameras and what we're going to do is going to import that ZBrush model that we with the good UVs so go to tools we're going to go to import import mesh and in here we'll find the scan box retopo ZBrush high res and we'll hit enter and there he goes and it will start loading in the mesh again this process can take a little bit of time to do it so I'm gonna pause the video once more and then wait for this to load in now I'm back in Agisoft and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that Z high res ZBrush model with the good UVs and reproject the texture that Agisoft has onto those UVs so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the top I'm gonna to go to tools I'm gonna to go to import and import mesh and here's that retopo ZBrush high res OBJ it's gonna load that in now this will again take a minute or so to load in so I'm gonna give this a little bit of time and then we'll move on to the next step the new model has been uploaded and now we have to create the new texture onto the UVs so we're gonna go back to workflow build texture and in here we want mapping mode to be keep UV so typically before it was set to generic we want to go all the way down to the list keep UV and then blending mode again you can play around with mosaic or average I th average has been working pretty good 4k map and everything else is pretty much default and then hit OK and then this will go through and rebuild that texture onto those new UVs and again this will take a little bit of time to do that so I'm gonna pause the video once more and we'll see the result and we'll export that out that process is done we're ready to export it go up to file export model and we'll just call it retopo our scan box retopo texture and we'll hit save and then it's going to ask you for the export the texture as a JPEG that is perfectly fine hit OK and then that will save off and then we'll have our texture and we're going to take that into Photoshop we're going to do uh, a detail map that we're going to be able to apply in ZBrush to get even more detail from our texture map so here's the result of our transfer of our texture map from Agisoft onto our UVs that we made in Maya so there's the retop of texture and here's a little bit blown up and you can see came out really well on the transfer but the problem inherently is that when the photos were taken the top and the bottom of the box were blown out because of the specular uh, light that was hitting 
both sets of images when we photographed it outside. So this is sometimes a typical problem with uh, photographing outside, especially if you're still doing it in a sunny day, you're still going to get some blown out parts of your texture. And I'm going to show you how a quick way of trying to fix this it, using um, a world space normal map and Photoshop. Or you could use Painter to do it too. Uh, but I find this method to be a really unique way and it, it works pretty darn well, especially if you've got UVs that are more spread out than this. This is a pretty clean model since it's almost a box in its uh, shape. The UVs are very uh, straight and it's very easy to come here in Photoshop and make a marquee and select and then make a mask out of that to color correct. But we're going to use an object space normal to help us with our selections of our masks and then apply a hue saturation of vibrance to help color correct these two blown out areas that you know happened in our uh, photo shoot. So let's get started with that. So what program I'm going to use to make the normal space uh, map? You can use a Substance Painter. So if you know how to do that, you're more than welcome. I'm going to use another program that's been around for a very, very, very long time called X Normal, and it bakes out really good maps, um, normal maps, uh, ambient occlusion maps, cavity maps, a whole bunch array. And I'm going to show you kind of the results that we're going to shoot for. So this is what a world space normal looks like. So it's based off uh, red, green, and blue based off the world X, Y, and Z values where a normal, a tangent space normal is based off the normals of the polygon, individual polygons. So it's very, quite different in the look and feel. Here with the world space, we're able to almost select regions of color and make a mask out of that or a selection mask and that's what we're going to use so let's jump into X normal we're going to make a couple ma maps out of X normal so we can use it uh, later when we go back in or we take this into Marmoset for our final presentation and it's going to add those extra maps are going to really add some extra bite to our final result so let's open up X normal and again X normal I'm just going to come over um, it's not here. Oh, there it is. X normal. Or you can type in X normal. So I just opened the web page. All you have to do is type in X normal in Google. You get this page. And again, you can go through some of the tutorials, whatever, um, and find some more information about it. But we're just going to go to downloads. And then right here, you can just download the, the newest installer for Windows. And boom. You're ready to roll. So this is what X normal looks like. Let me hide these right here and move this over. So it's a basic interface. Um, over here on the right hand side, you've got your high definition mesh. So those are your high polys, low definition mesh, low polys, and your baking options. Now you could get into other examples and some other tools in X normal and what it can do. But we're just going to be using these three top uh, buttons to get things started. So first we need to put in our high definition mesh. So we click on it. This is the menu. Now you could right click it and say add meshes, but I'm a little bit lazier than that. I'm just going to come over and I'm going to grab my ZBrush high res. And I'm just going to click on it, hold, and drag it over into the black area. And that's automatically going to input the, the mesh into X normal and it's the same thing with the uh, low definition click on the low definition find your low poly that you made in Maya with the UVs drag and drop boom done now it's all set go to baking options and in here this is where you want to set your output file so you got this little box over here where does it want to go so I've already got some maps already made in here I made a little folder called X normal and I've made some maps already. And then what's the size going to be a 2K map right here. Pretty much default is pretty good for what we're going to be using it for. So you can leave it here. Renderer, there's several different types of renderers. 
You can do the default bucket render, which is using the CPU, or you can use the CUDA render, which is using the GPU. Uh, sometimes this is kind of a hit or miss. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. But you always, always get a better result. You always get some result from the bucket renderer. With the CUDA, it might go faster. That's the, the benefit of it, but sometimes it doesn't work. So you kind of have to play around. I'm going to be stick with the reliable one. Uh, but you can definitely play around with that. Anti-icing, how, how much anti-icing is applied to the texture when it's done. Normally, uh, I usually stick that around two. One that actually does pretty good sometimes. And then, maps to render. Now, this is the meat and potatoes. And there's so many maps that this will make. You definitely could take advantage of what this uh, can do for you. Uh, what we want is a normal map. So we're going to click that on. And then we're going to go to the options box right here. Click on that. And right now, uh, by default, it usually turns on by tangent space normal. So nor what we normally see a normal look like. Uh, but if we want a world space normal, which we want to use, turn this tangent space off. And that's all you got to do to make that map. So close that out. Now there's a height map, which you, you can use for uh, displacement. You can see this. This is a pretty cool one. Even gives you some interactive controls as it's making it. Uh, you can make an ambient occlusion map right here. Click on that and options. And I'm the pretty much default settings that I find with this ambient occlusion map are awesome. So we're going to make an ambient occlusion map. So default settings are going to look good. You just click it on. And that's going to help us add a little details inside a Marmoset. Um, let's see what other map we can make. Uh, a curvature map. We can play with that. You can make a curvature map. But uh, the one I really want up here is cavity map. So then making uh, nooks and crannies. So it's almost like an ambient occlusion, but it's got more detail uh, in it. So it really gets adds uh, dark and white spots into the nooks and crannies, into the high and low surfaces of the texture. So I really, and I use this, I use, leave this at default too. So I'm just going to make a, a normal map, ambient occlusion map, and a cavity map by default settings. That should work just fine. So now when I come up to the top uh, or back to the side over here, there's this button right here that says, you know, generate maps. But always double check where are your maps going to go. This is where they're going to go. Hit save and then boom, hit generate maps. And it's going to go through and generate that. So again, uh, this process does take a little bit of time uh, to go through. So I'm going to be kind of pausing it and then showing you the results uh, of the maps.